Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Drupal Association webinar, where we have our special guest, Whitney Hess, who's going to be talking about evolving Drupal's community governance. And I just want to first start by thanking everyone who's engaged in the community discussions. It is um, a really um, special um, process that we're going through as a community so that we can be healthier and build a better future for ourselves. And I personally, um, uh, and, and glad this is happening um, because obviously I come to work every day to serve the community and I can only do as well as I understand um, in terms of community needs and strategies you want to use um, for moving Drupal forward. So personally, I am really thankful for this, um, th this effort and the community discussions are the community's way of starting to surface um, what you know what they want to do where they want to focus in terms of evolving community governance and the Drupal Association is just honored that we can play a role to support you in this work and we want to keep an ear out to Whitney's messages to not only hear what the needs and strategies are and where we might be able to help next but also just to help the community hear where they want to go next in this community governance process um, because we're in standby mode to see where you need our help, if it's a, a summit or whatever it might be, we want to understand um, what we can do to help community, the community move forward in this process. Um, and so uh, with that, all those um, kind of accolades to the process, I want to thank Whitney and I'm super grateful for Whitney's expertise and care, making sure that she has a diverse perspective of the community's needs. She has spent hours and hours, not only in group sessions, but one-on-one -on -one calls and making sure she's reaching out to those not only in North America and Europe, but also um, in India and China and in, um, gosh, uh, South America, Costa Rica. God, I, I just lost track of all the places that you have been reaching out, Whitney. But thank you so much for your work, and I'm really excited to hand this over to you so you can share uh, your findings from the community discussions, as well as how we move forward. Thank you so much, Megan, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of this very important work. Thank you to everyone for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate your presence and your engagement, and uh, thank you to those who will be watching this video later. It's great to um, know that there are so many caring and concerned members of the Drupal community who want to participate in this process. So uh, let me just start off by saying that I'm gonna try to keep this brief. <laughs> I really felt um, that it was important to hold a webinar to walk through these findings rather than just setting out a slide presentation and kind of hoping that everyone understood the key points. But I also don't want to belabor this. If you have specific questions, I'll be sharing with you where you can ask those questions and where, of course, you can comment on these findings. Um, but here's what I would like to cover, hopefully within a half hour's time. I'm going to share the methodology that we've been using, what this process has entailed, and then there will be some findings and proposals in the form of what the shared needs of the community are, how we're defining those needs, the areas for improvement that the community has been identifying, and potential strategies that the community is proposing for ways to better meet those needs. Then I have a set of open questions that remain open and that the community really still needs to come together to answer for itself and a few next steps that I'll be participating in and helping to facilitate as the community moves this forward. So to catch you up, if you have not yet uh, been aware of what's going on with this process that Megan's been talking about, the recent events in the community led the Drupal Association to realize that it could play a role in providing a safe space for the community to have discussions 
to share their feelings and needs, thoughts and ideas around how to evolve community governance. And I came forward to be a facilitator and a mediator of that process. And this has been happening over the course of several months now. We started in mid-April, just before DrupalCon Baltimore. And in that time, I have personally conducted upwards of 27 one-on-one -on -one interviews. There may have been a couple since I actually counted that number. One-on-one -on -one interviews with both leaders and contributors worldwide, all of those regions of the world that Megan mentioned, we've tried to cover everywhere as much as we possibly could. We also held seven hour-long community discussions at DrupalCon Baltimore and another seven long discussions with a very similar format held online via Zoom in the first two weeks of May. So those DrupalCon Baltimore sessions came first in person and then the online sessions for the global community to participate. And in total, we had about 150 unique participants from the community to attend these sessions and many of them contribute in these sessions. The discussions were greatly focused on what the current state of community governance is and what the desired state is and what that gap currently remains as. I then synthesized the themes across all of those community discussions as well as the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I conducted and what I'm sharing with you today is that synthesis. All names and personally identifiable information of all the participants, whether it be people that attended the community discussions or people who I held one-on-one -on -one interviews with, all of that personal information has been kept 100% confidential and it continues to be. And that includes confidentiality from the Drupal Association and from DREES and from CWG, I have conducted these sessions personally and none, none of those names or personally identifiable information will be going anywhere outside of my personal notes. However, we did want to ensure that the content of these discussions was being made publicly available. And so we had um, the min meeting minutes from the community discussions, those seven at DrupalCon Baltimore and the seven that were held online, and those are posted on Drupal.org. Let's see if it's going to show the URL here. It's Drupal.org slash community slash discussions if you wish to see the raw contents of those individual community discussions. But what I'm sharing with you today is the synthesis of those themes. So what I did was as part of the community discussions, we listed out the shared needs that the participants of each session were feeling. We're not currently being met as adequately as they could be within the community. And I then tallied those set of needs from all 14 of the community discussion sessions. And I came up with the most common shared needs. And what you're seeing here are those most common needs in order of frequency from most frequent to least. And these 13 needs that I've captured here were identified in at least eight of the 14 sessions, meaning that these are really the top of the top, most common needs that people feel are not currently being met as adequately as they could be. Now, across those 14 community discussions, 75 unique needs were identified. And if you wish to see that full list of needs, there's a link here which we will be providing on this deck I'm just gonna show it to you briefly so you can see what was involved in this. Here is the full list, 75 needs, unique needs that were identified. And then I went through and tallied them and 
counted the number of mentions across those 14 sessions and then kind of put them in order of frequency. So just trying to show that this was a somewhat systematic process, not scientific, but systematic. So I'm gonna take you through each of these needs and give you the definition that we are using to differentiate between these so that there's crystal clear understanding of what we mean by each of these words. Because of course, understanding was one of the needs that was identified. So I wanted to try to meet that need as best as I can. So we have definitions here, and I apologize for the density of text, but I'm gonna read through each of these and help to kind of find the distinction between them. So the number one need that was discovered is awareness. And I'm defining this as knowledge of a situation or fact. A lot of people attended these community discussions because they wanted to be aware of what was going on. They heard rumblings of something or they were having in-depth discussions with their friends and colleagues in the community, but they wanted to know what other people knew, what other people were aware of, what other people were thinking, feeling, and needing. So really just wanting to um, broaden and deepen their knowledge of what was happening. I'm hearing a little bit of um, background noise. So just for everyone, if you could mute yourself, that would be great. It would help me be a little less distracted. <laughs> Thank you so much. So the second most common need is participation. And this is what I'm defining as the act of taking part, really just being a part of this process. And that is, I think, a really encouraging thing to find, that this is such a participatory community that people really aren't going to accept things just happening to them without being an active part of the process. Next was transparency, openness to public scrutiny. People were really wanting there to be greater transparency of decisions that were being made by leaders of the community, wanting transparency into what that process is for decision making, how decisions are made, why decisions are made, and bringing the public, meaning the community at large, into that process so that it isn't happening behind closed doors. Next was clarity, the quality of coherence and intelligibility. This is in clarity of communication, clarity of process, clarity of decision making, uh, clarity of policy. People are really wanting there to be a greater coherence, a greater understanding and crispness of the messages that are delivered and the policies that are held within the community so that there's less confusion about what is what and what definitions are and things of that nature. Next was a need for contribution. And this is more than participation, which is being a part of the process. Contribution is really being a part of being about the result or helping to advance the process. So there were a lot of people that attended these community discussions that felt a personal responsibility for being a part of the solution and wanted to contribute in a way that they felt like they weren't yet being um, engaged to do fully. Healing was another very common theme that resulted from these sessions, the process of becoming healthy again. Many people felt as if recent events over the past several years had caused a deterioration of the health of the Drupal community, and they really have been feeling a need to heal as a community and to come together and unify and move forward as one. Next is trust, which I'm defining as the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. This could be the trust in the leadership, trust in process, trust in the governance model, trust in other community members. This extended to a lot of things, but there was certainly a feeling that there was a lack of reliability 
or lack of strength in some of the aspects of the Drupal community. Understanding, which is the ability to perceive the significance or, or an explanation or cause of something. So what's the cause and effect here? There was definitely a desire for a, a greater understanding of why things were happening the way they were and just understanding what the catalyst of recent events had been and, and why there was a call for an evolution of the community governance as a result. Communication was another big need. So sec successfully conveying or sharing information and ideas and the key word here is successful. So certainly there have been communications that have resulted from recent events or have been a regular part of either Dries's governance process, uh, technical leadership, the Drupal Association support of the community, community working group. Communications do come out of these various governing bodies but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a successful conveying of the information and that goes back to the clarity as well so people are really wanting more frequent communication and greater clarity of communication next is connection and this is really i, I see this as an umbrella need it, it encompasses so many others in that it really is what so many people are here for, a connection with other community members, strong links, associations, and relationships between members of the community, and wanting to stay connected and bonded and be resilient through um, the many experiences that we have had and will continue to have as a community. Next is empowerment. And this goes back to participation and contribution. People really feeling a self-responsibility to be a part of the process and to contribute to solutions and to the community success. So empowerment specifically is having the authority to do something, to be able to control oneself, to claim one's right as a member of this community, this open source community, where community participation and contribution is so critical. Next is process, where there is a systematic series of steps taken to achieve a particular end so that people know what the process is for a variety of situations in different realms of the community, that that process be clear, that it be well documented, and that it be regularly followed, consistent, consistent in the way that it is utilized. And then lastly, progress an advancement toward a better, more complete, and more modern condition, people really want to see the Drupal community move forward. Move forward together towards a healing, as I mentioned earlier, but really just not be, stay stuck, not be circling around these same issues and find a way to move forward successfully, effectively together. Now, as I showed you on that spreadsheet, there were 75 needs that were identified as shared needs that the community has and that aren't being successfully and fully met. These are the top 13. So these were the ones that were mentioned in at least eight of the 14 community discussions. And these are the ones that I am hearing are, have the most heat around them would be a way that I would put it, are the most relevant and most urgent for us to address at this time. Now, there were some particular areas for improvement that came out of these community discussions, as well as the many one-on-one -on -one interviews that I conducted as well. And these are the areas for concern, might be another way to state it. Things that people are truly concerned about that are perhaps exacerbating these needs that aren't being met. F firstly, one very common theme that arose from these discussions is Dries as the benevolent dictator for life, BDFL, and as the single point of escalation. This has become a concern for many people in the Drupal community. Another theme is the community working group, CWG's process, its membership, meaning who belongs to the CWG and how that happens, and the resources that they have available to them to do their job, a volunteer job, as effectively as possible. 
Next are concerns about conflicts of interest across Drupal entities, meaning conflicts of interest between DREES and the community working group and um, Drupal Association and technical leadership and perhaps even for-profit Drupal companies and all of the different entities that make up this Drupal ecosystem. Another concern is around codes of conduct. This didn't come up in as many of the, Drup the um, community discussions as I was expecting going into it because of so much of the online discussion had really been about code of conduct, the, the multiple codes of conduct that we have. There's a Drupal code of conduct and there's also a Drupal con code of conduct. There were definitely some mentions of ways we can improve it. Um, so I wanted to make sure to include it here, but not as big of a theme as um, we had anticipated. Also a real need and desire around having more official communication channels so that people have a single source of information about what's happening in the Drupal community and, and uh, one place to tap into to, to stay up to date. A real desire for better onboarding for new members of the Drupal community as people join the community as they begin to use Drupal as a platform, um, how to bring them up to speed on what this community is all about and what it means to be a, an effective and successful member of the Drupal community. And this was found to be needed um, not only for new members, but also for people that perhaps have been around a long time, but whose engagement with the community is changing or who may not have um, all the information that they need to be a, a successful contributor. Findability and accessibility of guidelines and processes. This extends to existing members of the community, new members of the community, really just, again, needing to know kind of where these things are and making sure that they're well documented and that they're up to date and current and and um, really consistent. And then bro most broadly, a need for a more crisp and clear definition of what the Drupal community means. We use that word community to mean a lot of things and I'll be going into that in just a moment. Now, I want to be clear that these are issues that have been coming up in the Drupal community for a long time. And they continue to come up every time we kind of come to a pivotal moment in our evolution as a project. But growth and time have made many of these issues bigger and more urgent. So we're at a point now where perhaps we had bigger issues that had to be dealt with first, and now we're seeing that there's really space for and engagement around these issues that are really rising to the surface. So I thought it was important to name that because for many of you listening to this, many of you will be listening later, now, this isn't news. If you have been involved in the community for a long time, these are issues that you've known about for a while. But the Drupal ecosystem has evolved, and it's evolved beyond the developer community, and our stakeholders have changed. And as we continue to grow, this necessitates an evolution of our governance model. And perhaps clarity on how the community can change itself to be in better alignment of what the wider variety of stakeholders and Drupal community members need now. So that's what we're really trying to shine the spotlight on, that it's time. It's really time to address some of these issues. And I'm finding a, a real, um, wave of engagement that is going to allow greater movement and solutions for these issues um, that have been lingering for some time. Now I just want to take a moment 
because I've been talking for a while. I can see the videos again and I, and I can, um, I, I'm not just seeing my screen and I'm wondering, are there questions already that perhaps I can address before I move forward? Megan, are you seeing anything coming over on your end? I'm not, but let me just ask the, um, the participants, if you do have a question, can you use the chat window and add your question there, please? If you're not seeing anything yet, for the sake of time, I'll move on, but I will definitely come back in a little bit and check in. Okay, great. We have not seen anything in the chat, so I think you can move forward. Thank you so much. Okay, so I've stated so far kind of what's on people's mind, what people feel are, are areas for improvement, things, areas of concern, needs that aren't being met. And the community is an engaged one. And of the 150 or so people who have participated in this process so far, there are many ideas for how we can meet these shared needs. I'm calling these potential strategies. These are not my recommendations. I want to be really clear on that. I'm not coming in as a consultant and saying, I've heard your problems and this is how I think you should solve them. I'm here to surface what the Drupal community itself wants to see change. And so these are essentially proposals that have come from the Drupal community as a result of both the community discussions and the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I held. And these were the most common themes that I heard. They're in no particular order. The needs were listed from most frequently mentioned um, first, but these are in no particular order. These strategies I will go through in greater depth, but I want to first provide a snapshot of what they all are. So firstly, there is a real desire to more concretely separate project governance from community governance. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. I already mentioned this, but there is a real desire to see a single location for official Drupal communications so that people know where to pay attention for changes that are coming, news, updates, decisions, and other important information. There's a desire for a formal clarification of the variety of roles that Dries holds in the Drupal community and the project a formal clarification of all leadership roles in the Drupal project so that everyone knows how, what the leader's um, responsibilities are, what the, their jurisdiction is, how they received that role, what the process is for removing someone from a leadership role, et cetera. There is a potential strategy, again, a proposal, for Dries to step down as the Drupal Association board chair as a way to remove some of those concerns about conflict of interest. Um, I will note that Dries does recuse himself from board decisions when he feels and when other board members feel that there is a conflict of interest. So there is already some process in place for that, but there, um, was a proposal, several people had made a proposal that perhaps one of the ways that we could address some of these concerns of conflict of interest would be to have Dries spread around more of his responsibilities to others. There's a desire to see more formalization, that's a word, uh, more formality, that's the one, <laughs> and, and a greater maturity for the processes and policies of the community working group. A proposal for the Drupal Association to have greater support of community management. The DA is supporting this process, as you heard from Megan in the beginning of today's webinar. There is absolutely some involvement from the Drupal Association today, but it's mostly because it's filling a gap and it's less formal and official, but there's a real call from members of the community to see more of this and for the Drupal Association to, to play a, a bigger role in managing the community. 
There is a desire for more community elected leadership positions. As I mentioned, there's some um, proposals for how to revise or perhaps even consolidate the code of conduct, codes of conduct. There were proposals around having some sort of core values defined for the community to be a companion document to the code of conduct. And then a desire for a governance summit of some kind to craft revisions to the community governance and to start an implementation plan. So those are the high level potential strategies to meet our shared needs as a community. More detail on each of those 11 potential strategies. So firstly, the separation of the project and the community oversight and governance. There's a real belief that there are very independent interests and skill sets when it comes to the technical and project governance of Drupal, the platform, from the Drupal community and what is required to oversee and manage and govern that. And so people are really wanting to see greater boundaries between the two so that when we talk about governance, we're not meaning one thing that encompasses both project and community. And there's a real feeling that if we separate them better, there, that will reduce conflicts of interest between them. And a clarification of which positions are leadership roles and where there's a, a difference in leadership in, in the project and technical governance and where there's leadership in community governance. Next is a single location for the official Drupal communications. Right now, many of the communications that we read to know what's going on with Drupal are on Dries's personal website. The community working group posts in one location, DA staff posts in another, um, there's a lot of different places that we have to pay attention to. And there's a desire for kind of that unified feed so that we are able to tune into one place and can always be up to date on what's going on with the project and in the community. And a real desire for those communications to be written very clearly and to be published frequently so that people can stay involved and for greater transparency as well. Next, we have kind of the issue of many hats. This was something that came up in many of the community discussions as well as many of the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I held. A real desire for clarity around the roles that Dries plays in the project in the community. Which role holds what responsibilities and what authority is granted to that role? And more explicit boundaries between those roles to know which role Dries is in with each official communication. Dries has very strongly um, self-identified what role he's in when he makes certain decisions or when he communicates certain things. And at times he has named what that role is, but people are really wanting more explicitness around it. Um, and an acknowledgement. People are wanting acknowledgement of the conflicts of interest that arise and the unintentional biases that come with holding multiple positions in the community and in the project. And there's a real desire to see a maturation beyond benevolent dictator for life and some form of succession plan in place that allows Dries to share more of his responsibilities with others. And he has said on multiple occasions, and he even said multiple times from the stage at DrupalCon Baltimore, that this is something he would really like to see as well, that it is not comfortable for him to be the single point of escalation or to play all these different roles um, that do sometimes conflict with one another. So that's, that's a great sign to show that the Drupal project and the community is growing and maturing, and we need to move forward with other solutions. Similarly, there's a real desire for formal clarification of all leadership roles in the Drupal project, who does what. There are still quite a few people in the Drupal community that don't know what the Drupal Association is, what it does, what the difference is between its staff and its board of directors, what the community working group is and who it is and what it does and 
its relationship or not to the Drupal Association, the difference between these roles and tech and project leads, track chairs of DrupalCon, et cetera. There's a lot of different leadership roles in the community, many that I haven't even named. And so there's a need for better uh, clarity around what each of these roles are, what they entail, what their responsibilities are, what their authority is, et cetera. And there's also a desire to, um, to name the extent to which any of these leadership roles have an effect or an, or an influence on the technical direction of Drupal. Then, as I mentioned, there is a proposal for Dries to step down as the Drupal Association board chair that he would retain a founder seat, which is fairly common, that he would still be a member of the board, but that there would be a more neutral chairperson who would be appointed by the board. This would be someone who does not have a stake in a for-profit Drupal entity, a business, for instance, someone who has board of director experience, but that can play a more neutral role so that um, it can contribute to easing and re resolving some of the perceived conflicts of interest, whether they're real or perception. Um, whether they're intentional or unintentional, there definitely needs to be a solution that addresses it. Then we have a proposal for the community working group, CWG, to formalize and mature to expand its number of members, which it has done. It has added two members in recent weeks to have um, term limits perhaps for these members and for that to be staggered so there aren't all new people coming on at once so that there is some continuity to clarify its process and to ensure that it's consistently following it perhaps even with some oversight of um, an ombudsman or a watchdog i'm going to use those terms interchangeably even though there is some distinction there but an ombudsman is really someone who is appointed to ensure that you know, government, or in this case, our governance uh, entities are following the process and that there is a place for any complaints about that process to be uh, um, raised and addressed. There is a desire for better policy or better clarity on what that policy is, for what evidence um, and is admissible, and I'm using these terms because this isn't a court, but these are the terms that people are, uh, that they use, and so I wanna be true to those terms. These are the ones we're comfortable with using or aware of. What can be submitted and what is not admissible to a community working group case so that we're discouraging any information gathering that is unethical. A real desire for immediate and frequent communication with the person who is being accused and who's, who um, complainants are bringing up issues about so that they are involved in the process. And that there be some kind of policy around warnings or a probation or suspension, some kind of interim status before a permanent dismissal from the community greater consistency from case to case in how the process is followed, and, and in consistency in how process is applied to all parties involved. And then just greater communication with the community throughout. But of course, and this was named many times in the community discussions, of course, understanding that there needs to be a balance between transparency and privacy. As I mentioned, there's a proposal for the Drupal Association to be a greater support in community management, to perhaps even have a full-time community manager that can address issues in real time. The, uh, that the Drupal Association has resources at its disposal in the way that a community working group doesn't, for instance. So perhaps the DA could be providing access to mediation training for its community manager, as well as members of the community working group. Uh, a desire to see more of these safe spaces like the community discussions that we've held over the last couple months, but for the Drupal Association to have more of these so that 
community members can come together regularly to express feelings and needs about community issues. Many people who participated in this process felt that the nonviolent communication or NVC process that we utilized was a really healthy and helpful one. And perhaps for the Drupal Association to encourage local organizers to follow similar processes. Resources and legal and financial protections for the independent governing body, whether it be the community working group or some variation thereof, which currently does not have protections. This is a group of volunteers that is not under the umbrella of the Drupal Association, and it really leaves those members of the community exposed. And then just more explicit mentoring, coaching, buddy system, et cetera, available for community members so that we can remain connected and ensure that people are getting their needs met as, as they become active and engaged members of the Drupal community. Whitney, we do have a question. Would you want to take questions as you go or? Go ahead, please. Okay, this comes from Chris. It says, concerning admissible evidence, quote unquote, where do we set the line between what someone's private life, as long as it's legal, and what concerns the community? Thank you for that question. And remind me who asked that question? It is Chris. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that question. And that is exactly it. So I can't answer that, but that is exactly the question that the community is holding right now. What is appropriate information to bring forward to the community working group? The community working group, perhaps, and I'm going to go back a slide, perhaps needs to have a better and clearer policy on what information they are willing to look at. And if any information that they receive about a community member does not fit that policy, then it needs to be disregarded and not brought into their deliberation process. So, there is certainly a question about private information, personal versus public. Um, there is a question about, and this will be noted again in the open questions, when is someone representing the Drupal community? Is it only in Drupal-related spaces? And what are Drupal spaces? Because the Drupal ecosystem continues to expand. Yes, we have the issue queues. We have activity on D.O. specifically. You can argue that's admissible because it's happening right there on an entity that is governed by, is managed by the Drupal Association. So that's very concrete. But what about IRC? What about Slack? What about Twitter? What about um, other communities where perhaps people are also involved, other developer communities, for instance, where they're also involved, but they're known to be Drupal community members as well. You know, there's so many um, subtleties around this issue of community and what the Drupal ecosystem really is and where it extends itself and where it doesn't, that it contributes to this question of, what is ethical information to bring forward in a CWG case? And is that personal information? Is any information that's findable online admissible? Should it be? Um, if it's publicly available online, but it wasn't brought into the Drupal community, is that fair game or is it not? So there's all sorts of questions about this, Chris, and I'm glad that you're raising it. No good answers right now, but there's a real need for the community to come together and put some policy around this. So thank you. I'm going to move on now to community elected leadership positions. There are a couple community elected members of the Drupal Association board today, but there's a real desire for more and a desire to see greater decentralization of power across the Drupal community because this is an open source project and people really want to see policies and practices that are in alignment with the philosophy of open source. But of course, we're growing leaps and bounds and we're also one of the largest, if not the largest open source community in the world. 
So there does need to be some formality. There are going to need to be people in leadership positions so that there's more accountability and more structure. That structure does need to be there. But people are proposing more community elected leadership positions. And that um, there be a community elected group to manage community disputes. Maybe this is escalated to a trained set of members of the community working group, or maybe this is the community working group, but that there be more elected roles rather than only appointed roles. And as I mentioned, some kind of ombudsman, watchdog that can field any concerns about mismanagement that is happening in any leadership roles across the project. Then kind of a revisiting is a soft way of putting it, or perhaps even a consolidation of the codes of conduct. There is the Drupal code of conduct and there is the Drupal con code of conduct. Um, people want to see a reevaluation of the need for both. Um, on the one hand, the Drupal code of conduct is created by the community. On the other, the Drupal con code of conduct is a really more of a legal document that is part of the Drupal association because the Drupal association organizes and facilitates Drupal cons. So there is some distinction there, but what is the distinction? Do we need both? Should they be consolidated or revisited in some way? Uh, there's a real desire for greater specificity on what the expected behaviors are of Drupal community members in various Drupal spaces and how those um, policies are applied and what the consequences are when there, there is um, any kind of um, discrepancy or questioning about whether those policies are being violated. Clarity on people's personal be beliefs versus their behaviors and really drawing that clear distinction and ensuring that people understand which we're referring to here when we talk about a code of conduct and, and when we specify these behaviors. Greater explicitness for the higher standards, perhaps, of people that are in leadership roles and local organizers are included in that as well. And as Chris brought up, greater explicitness on when the code of conduct is applicable to personal lives and non-Drupal spaces. But what, what do we mean when someone is in a non-Drupal space? Are they a representative of the Drupal community or not? We need clarity around that. There was more so than a desire to revise the code of conduct. There was really a big call for a companion document to the code of conduct that is around our core values as a community. This would be defining the kind of community that we want to be, with a global mindset, meaning this is not solely North American or Western values. That is not the intention here at all. It really is to ensure that we're looking at this from a global perspective and have full awareness that these are the values of the global Drupal community. And it would allow us to align our community members with the purpose of the Drupal project. Um, it would need to create space for different values because we are all individuals who hold our own values, come from our own families of origin and cultures, and those do have different values. So it needn't be rigid or restrictive. It does need to be open and flexible, but still have some kind of definition around it. And also a recognition that if we define our core values, that there may be people who do not feel aligned with those values and may choose to leave the community. And this is a direct statement that the Drupal culture encourages collective ownership and individual contribution and empowerment. So how can we create some form of documentation that defines what that collective is, but still leaves space for that individuality? And again, when we onboard new community members, when new community members join the community to give them some clarity and around what is expected of them and to confirm the understanding of expectations because we cannot expect people to abide by codes of conduct and align with core values if they haven't been made aware of them. And then lastly, 
there's a call for a, com a governance summit, which is something that occurred many years ago, um, but it's been some time. A call for a governance summit to convene to craft revisions to community governance. That this really must remain a community driven bottom up approach with the community in the driver's seat, not the Drupal Association, not DREES, not the community working group or anyone else. There's a question about who participates in the governance summit. Is it an open invitation and anyone can apply, anyone can just sign up, register, or is it invite only? Uh, and a real desire to consult with people who've done things like this before. Other open source communities, Backdrop and its project management community-based decision making, underrepresented communities who need to be more active uh, um, role in crafting these revisions as well. And then for a draft plan that it comes out of this, this governance summit to be shared with the community at large, globally, for comment and approval, and then some form of game plan for its implementation. So that's a lot. I know it's a lot, but these are the, um, all of the potential strategies that were proposed through these community discussions. So some open questions that I've already touched upon. What do we mean when we say community? So what is community? And we really need to define this so that we're using it accurately and consistently. Who is a Drupal com community member and who isn't? So is anyone who uses Drupal as a platform at their work, are they automatically a community member or is it someone who um, has a D.O profile or is it someone who pays the Drupal Association for regular membership? Who is a community member? What is the dividing line between the project and the community? Um, if we are going to have more elected roles, then how? Is it democratic vote? And if so, who is eligible to vote? Who is eligible to run for that position? Um, should voting be for a specific individual or should it be for what one um, participant called a role profile? Meaning should we have a profile of the kind of person that we need in this leadership role there qualifications, their education, their experience, and should we be voting on that and then appointing someone within the community who fits that profile, for instance. Um, when is someone representing Drupal outside of specific Drupal activities and spaces, and when are they not, even if they are a member of the Drupal community? When is the code of conduct not in violation? but an issue is remaining unresolved, what happens before escalation? What's the process? What are the policies? And there are many Drupal communities, plural. I've been saying the Drupal community this whole time, and that's a turn of phrase that many of us use, but there are many communities. How can we take more of a global perspective? How can we have processes and policies that work for all of our communities globally, consistently, and fairly? So our next steps to moving this forward, to addressing these needs, to evaluating these proposals and strategies is as follows. Firstly, we are about to deploy a community survey on the Governance Summit to have the community input on how this Governance Summit works, who facilitates, what it entails, who participates, et cetera. And that will be coming shortly. So be on the lookout for that. We definitely want your participation in that survey. There's also going to be some form of online suggestion box that we're going to put up for ongoing community feedback so that this is not the end of it. We want this to be the beginning of the process for the community to make itself known. We will allow anonymous submissions. There will be a neutral third party so who is monitoring this. So that the comments are never going to be about that person. And they will be surfacing the themes rather than sending every single comment. And they'll be sharing those themes with the community working group and Drupal Association staff for now so that we can ensure that that feedback is being heard. We will share the findings from the survey on the Covenants Summit. We will propose an approach based on the, those survey findings for the community comment. I will uh, continue to support 
the coordination and facilitation of the governance summit to ensure that we are addressing these concerns and we're coming up with feasible solutions for moving them forward. We'll be sharing the outcomes for community comment. And then there may be some kind of community task force that gets assembled in some form that uh, continues through implementation so that the community is taking full ownership of the work that ultimately needs to be done to evolve community governance. So it took me a full hour. I did it as fast as I could, but wanted to be thorough. I appreciate your attention and your participation so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of these really important discussions and this very important process at an integral time in the Drupal project evolution. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat window and Megan will read them to me and I'll take a few minutes to answer those. Otherwise, please feel free to email me. This is my personal email address, Whitney at WhitneyHess.com. I'm happy to answer any of your questions privately and will ensure that if there is something that I can't answer personally, that I will bring that to the relevant party who can. So Megan, do we have any questions? We do. First, I just want to say thank you, Whitney. That was really thorough and I think just presented in a way it was at least easy for me to understand where we can focus and, and where we can kind of head next as a community. Well, I'm um, happy to hear that. Thank you. You bet. I do have some questions. So um, the first one comes from George Demet. It has to do with strategy number six. Um, Chris had asked a question about admissible evidence and, and, and you gave an, an overview of just some areas that needed some clarification um, as it relates to the community working group. So George Demet followed up um, about that and said, to what extent did you get a sense that um, this issue around admissible evidence was a systematic concern versus the perception of what happened in a specific case? Thank you. I, I got the impression that this is a systematic concern because multiple cases have been named around this issue. It is a perception, certainly. Only members of the community working group can know for certain what information they're accepting and using in their deliberations and what they aren't. But there certainly is a perception that a lack of clarity around the policy on what is acceptable invites unacceptable and perhaps unethical information to be shared. And there is concern that if that information is being submitted, that it may very well be used by members of the community working group to make their decisions. Does that answer your question, George? I'm just watching the chat. I don't see a response, but um, we'll make sure if he does have more. Um, okay. Just to put in the chat window, George, and anyone else who has questions, please do the same. Um, we do have a, it's kind of a, an opportunity, and there's a question in here too. Um, so Joseph, um, who is part of the um, Austrian community, is doing a lot of work, uh, that local community is doing a lot of work to help us with DrupalCon Vienna. Um, and as many know, um, we opted for various reasons, some of it being financial that, um, and also lack of demand for trainings on Monday, just to, to not do an, a, you know, the DrupalCon um, trainings that Monday. We created a, a nice, you could say, hole in our schedule. Uh, we're gonna keep with the DrupalCon that's from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the main conference, but this one day, uh, we won't be having any program programming. And the, um, the local community has stepped in and is creating some really great um, summits and um, other community programs that day. And it's all being led by the community, which I think is exciting. And I'm really pleased to see this happening. Um, and Joseph just asked, um, is, does it make sense to use some of the facilities that they've found for Monday to hold community discussions? And, you know, it'd just be nice to hear from you, Whitney, what you would recommend that the focus would be, how it gets facilitated. I mean, right now we don't, 
we were able to have you come to DrupalCon Baltimore, but we don't have you coming to DrupalCon Vienna. Right. Um, I just would love to hear if you had any ideas or, you know, and of course, if you need more time, but I just want to put it out there that there, we hear the need and people are kind of saying they want to address it. I'm not sure how to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. And thank you, Joseph. I am so heartened by what the local community is doing to come together and that there is such a strong desire to facilitate these community discussions locally. I feel strongly that that can only be a positive thing. Uh, we, my intention, my personal intention that I held in each one of those sessions was to do everything I could to help people feel heard and understood. That is part of the healing process, and that's part of progress. So I feel strongly that holding community discussions, whether it's in the format that we used, which I can go into greater depth on, and Joseph, you and I are in contact, so we can talk about that specifically, and I can give you some structure that I used for those discussions. So perhaps you can have those um, community set discussions in Europe mirror the ones that we held at Baltimore and online, or they can be looser and less structured and not using the nonviolent communication ground rules that I had set up, if you so choose, but just provide an open space where people can share. You may want to bring some of these findings into that space so that you can confirm where there's agreement with what we've already discovered and identify where there isn't. That would be greatly helpful to me, to the Drupal Association, and to the community at large as well. So let's definitely continue to discuss it. We have a little bit of time. Um, I unfortunately will not be there due to scheduling and other logistical issues, but I still can play an active role in helping you to um, make these sessions as effective as possible if you are interested in having me play that role. So again, it's really up to you. I think, I hope that's a, enough of an answer for now, but let's keep discussing it separately. And Joseph, um, this is Megan speaking. I just want to thank you as well for hearing the need and, and wanting to create a solution. And I'd love to partner with you on that. Um, so let's make sure we talk afterwards. Um, I'd love to see a community discussion at DrupalCon, and I've kind of heard from the research that having that on a regular basis at DrupalCons would add a lot of value to the community. So I hear that myself and would love to, to participate. Great, um, one other question. Um, Oh, good. Thank you, Chris. Chris just said, thank you for this much needed and healthy discussion in which I felt comfortable putting in my two cents when I was afraid of being judged if I commented on Drupal.org. It's really great thank to hear. You, yeah, maybe you want to address that, Whitney. Just, thank you. That's fantastic. And yes, there were many people who came to me privately who felt that they didn't, um, it wouldn't be the best strategy for them to participate in these community discussions or to share their thoughts online and in the variety of forums that were available to them. And I respect and understand that it's not the right strategy for everyone, which is why I've continued to post my personal email on the communications that we've had so far, the, the formal blog posts about this process, and it is here as well, and I will continue to post it. I really do encourage people to reach out to me privately if that's the better strategy for them to share their feelings, needs, thoughts, ideas as they arise. Uh, but I am grateful to hear, Chris, that you felt that you could do that in this space. So thank you very much. I just want to point out, he does have a question. I just scrolled back and found one. Sorry about that, Chris. So let's make sure we uh, address it. Um, his question is, <clears throat> when does a person represent the Drupal community? I think there'll never be a definitive answer to this as the community is worldwide. I am American, but living in France for the past 15 years, I've learned that different cultures define privacy based on their environment. Um, it gives an example that many folks outside of the USA that I've met have a hard time understanding the reasons why President Clinton was impeached. 
It was basically based on concerns in his private life. Mm -hmm. As a member of government, whatever a person does will always affect the community at large and how it's being viewed. I think the only thing we can do is to limit the impact it can have on the community. So again, his question is, when does a person represent the Drupal community? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Again, this is a question that many people are holding right now. And there's a real desire to come together as a community to answer it. So with a project and a community that is as pervasive as ours, and in a living in the world of technology that is as pervasive as the one that we're living in, it infiltrates everything. And so what is that boundary line when someone who is a contributing member of the Drupal community is in a non-Drupal space? And are they still a representative of Drupal because they contribute to Drupal? Or if they're uh, in a leadership role, in Drupal and they're in a social environment that is not related whatsoever to Drupal or even other professional pursuits of theirs, are they still a representative of Drupal in that social space? These are really tough questions. They're, they're questions that we are certainly not the only community that is grappling with. But we need to come up with some answers that are good enough for us for now. So I'm going to say that again, good enough for us for now. They're not going to be perfect. They're not going to be for everyone and they're not going to be forever, but we need to come up with something that we can move forward with. And I do believe that that will be a big part of what is discussed at the community governance summit. Um, and there will be perhaps a proposal for some definition around this that will then um, will seek approval from the larger community so that we can define and document it. That's great. Thanks, Whitney. Does anyone have any other questions? If so, please add them in the chat. Right now, it looks like we are out of questions. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, everyone who took the time out of your day to be here. Thank you to everyone who participated in these community discussions. Thank you to those of you who had one-on-one -on -one interviews with me. Uh, thank you to those who are participating in your own areas of the community in these discussions to move these issues forward. Uh, and thank you to those who are watching this video at a later date. I'm so grateful for the participation and the engagement of everyone in this community. It certainly has made my job in this role much easier and really an incredible learning experience for me. So thank you. And thank you again, Megan, for allowing me to participate and contribute to the Drupal community in this way. Wow, I think we're all benefiting from it. So thank you, Whitney. <laughs> all right, and with that, then I will conclude and then I'll work on posting the recording uh, for the rest of the community to see. Wonderful, and I do wanna make this clear that yes, we're posting the recording and we will also have a transcript. So we want these findings and the explanation of these findings to be as widely accessible as possible. So be on the lookout for that transcript coming soon. Wonderful. Thanks again, Whitney. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.